Welcome back. This is part six of the six part series on midlife crisis energy. Um, we've gone through four major transits, which most astrologers consider part of that midlife crisis energy. Um, but I've got this bonus video here, Jupiter opposing natal Jupiter, because you know what happens at about this time, a lot of the astrologers don't cover it, but um, it happens at about 42 years of age. Same with the other transits that we discussed. But this is really an energy of feeling like, why can't I get what I want? Why can't I get what I want? Um, the other ages that this usually happens at is age 6, 18, 30, 54, 66, 78, and 90. Yeah. So... During this time, as you're going through uh, this transit, you might feel um, kind of low with your energy. You might feel like you've done everything right. Um, and maybe you have. Maybe you've been walking the line at this point because, you know, after all those other transits we covered, especially the last one, Saturn, your second Saturn opposition, well, you might have really like tried to straighten things up and get things right. Um, but even though you're doing things, you know, you're, you're walking the line, you're doing it by the book, you're dotting your I's, crossing your T's like Saturn wants you to, right? Um, you're just not giving any easy breaks. And that's, that's where this, this Jupiter opposition is coming in, no easy breaks being given. And so um, this is a point in time when you're maybe having to look at your progress and realize um, that maybe there are improvements you need to make on some things that were done in the past, maybe past mistakes. And you're having to really look at, are you taking the right risk? Are you taking the right leaps of faith, right? Jupiter is kind of a lucky, expansive type of benefic energy. Um, and, you know, it, you just don't feel like the luck is coming because maybe the way that you want to get expansion in your life is at odds with how others are getting expansion or um, the way the universe is allowing for at that time. It's There's some kind of um, op uh, opposition at being at odds with, you know, the way that you want to get expansion with your life. So it's like you're having to work really hard for it. And so you got to ask yourself during those tough moments um, are you taking the right chances in life do you need to learn more you know jupiter is also uh, that higher knowledge that understanding the beliefs the, the the truths you know seeking the truth in your life getting beyond the facts and getting into the wisdom and it might be that you're having to look at other people's beliefs and viewpoints in order to get that expansion especially if you feel that the the opposition you're facing in getting growth in your life or progress in your life is coming from others who are giving you some kind of pushback or you're they're just basically not supporting you um, you, you you've got to really look at um, why is that is there another viewpoint you need to consider or something else you need to learn or um, Maybe, maybe the timing is off, right? And you, you need to take a different chance in a different way. On a personal level, because I've been sharing a little bit, um, for those of you who are interested in, you know, what this looks like in real life. Well, when I was going through it, during this time of my life, I started studying narcissism pretty heavily during that time. For those of you who don't know, I've written a book on narcissism. Um, but yeah, I was, you know, um, actually learning a lot about narcissism. I was learning a lot about um, intimacy, emotional uh, intimacy, attachment styles. Um, basically relationships trying to understand why do people wh where am I missing the boat here you know why is it that you know I've got this idea of what relationships need to be or partnerships need to be whether it's romantic or business or otherwise um, but I can't seem to get on the same page the way that I want to move forward in my life in those arenas are in some way out of step with how 
others are moving forward. And why is that? And I started learning about different value systems and what are my values? What is my value system? And how can I recognize this other person's value system so that I don't waste my time trying to partner with people where there's a misalignment of values and no matter how great of a person they are or how well-meaning they are, it's just not gonna work out because we, we don't share values or how to even recognize that somebody's faking sharing values, right? So a lot of studying trying to understand how other people think and because it was affecting me, getting progress in life, right? If you keep getting pushback from other people um, in in your own personal agendas, and, and for me, you know, my natal, by the way, my natal, Plut my natal Jupiter is in Pisces in the um, 11th house, it's a lot about, you know, social networks, friendships, soulmates, my ideals, my wish fulfillment in life, you know? Something was just, you know what I'm saying? So I was looking at this through a spiritual lens, but also how can, how can I make the friends, make the, the social connections, meet soulmates who I really am on the same page with? Um, how can I get out of these um, bad behaviors that's causing me to be a narc magnet? You know, how do I start attracting healthy relationships? And this is, you know, um, a lot of what I was working on during that transit. Um, I also started studying business leadership. And it was at that time that I, I launched a lot of online products and books. And I launched some classes and a blog and a whole lot more. So, um, you know, 11th House is like online social media. Um, astrology, I was doing astrology as well. So very much into that kind of stuff. But again, challenged. And, and yet all this stuff that I was learning was teaching me to kind of look at life through a different lens, through an astrological lens, through a healthy relationship coaching lens, through a, a business leadership lens, you know, not getting out of this employee mindset and in, into this entrepreneur mindset so really working on that and as I mentioned before I was also learning a lot about money management and credit repair but that was a lot of that was brought on by you know what was going on with the Pluto transit I mentioned before and the Saturn transit I mentioned before so um, but because of all of that intense pressure that was impacting me and not being able to get expansion right I, I have been wanting to move during this time and I could not get the financial leverage to move. So I was like, okay, well, I'm gonna learn how to manage my resources better. I mean, I might not be able to make people hire me or if they wanna get nosy and they decide, you know, they look me up online and they decide they don't like who I am in my off hours. <laughs> you know, they wanna make my life difficult on the job. I can't control any of that. But what I could control is managing my resources better and optimally. And all this other external stuff I cannot control, how the way that people want to advance is impeding the way I'm wanting to advance. But um, what do I have control over? I have control over how I manage my money and repairing credit. And it was shocking because one of the beliefs that got shattered during the time, and you know, we're talking about Jupiter, it's a lot about beliefs and good luck and fortune, you know. <laughs> But one of the beliefs that got shattered during this time, and it was for the good, is that when I started learning about credit repair, there was a limiting belief in my head that, well, I've got to have a lot of money to fix this. I've got to go throw money at people to make them take the stuff off my credit or put, you know, you know, to get money, good things on my credit, I've got to have more money. And actually what I learned during that time is that was all false. Even in the midst of financial crisis, with all this negative stuff happening in my money houses that I mentioned in previous segments, I started learning like how to build my credit with little or no money. And shockingly, I pulled it off. Like I didn't even increase my income really, or maybe I did um, by $2,000. Uh, that's nothing, you know, in one year. <laughs> like who cares? But I learned how to excel despite my circumstances and 
um, or in spite of, I should say, uh, my circumstances. So really powerful stuff where, yeah, I went from, gosh, when I started all this midlife crisis energy, I had bad credit, very bright, bad credit. Um, that was like back in 2016. And I was like a year out of a divorce. Credit just trashed and ruined. Now we're in 2021 as I'm filming this. So that's that's been, yeah, like, gosh, like five years now. And my credit is good. My credit is good now. And in fact, I just held, I held my daughter co-sign for a car. So... Um, so that she could get better credit. And I, ha I help, I've been helping my kids with their credit, you know, my 18 year old, because of what I learned during this time, I learned how to um, make it so that by the time my daughter turned 18, she had good credit. She actually had excellent credit by her 18th birthday because I learned techniques on how to do that without her even, like without any risk or increased income at all. And right, it's learning the game, right? Transcending like, yeah, these are the facts, but Jupiter's like, how do we sprinkle some good fortune on this, you know, um, despite the facts. The facts were that I didn't have a lot of income. My income wasn't really increasing year to year that much. It was pretty much stagnant um, because I was dealing with so much uh, malefic, debilitating energy going on in my money houses yet and still um, I find this way through you know looking at other ways of seeing my money my credit uh, my business my relationships not just with money but with people you know I start really seeing things through a different lens that helps me to get expansion despite the fact that there was so much pushback on doing that. So yeah, I'm gonna say also present day, like, and I've talked to people on my channel about this and I probably will more so in the future. Um, not only not only did I improve my credit, but yeah, I've, I'm now into investing. I've been over the last year investing into crypto and, and um, precious metals, silver, and I've been stockpiling for over a year now and I picked up gardening again. So this is how, you know, I come out of this energy. Yeah, I'm not going to say that when you come out of this, it's going to be like, <laughs> right? But you, it's, you, you, you can make the most out of it. You know, you, you can let the energy make you or break you. And I would say that for any of these transits, you either let the energy make you or break you. And no, this is not easy. Jupiter opposing natal Jupiter, not easy. And by the way, at 45 years old, which was me last year, I'm 46 now, I'm now closing that Jupiter square out. I'm in a closing Jupiter square. So this is just a sneak peek on, you know, the other side, the other side of all this midlife crisis energy. By the time you're 45, um, you know, you're going to need to really consider what it was that you started at age 36. And remember, when I started this series, I told you some of you are going to start dealing with these energies as early as 36 years old. You know, you, if you if you have that, that Pluto um, squaring Pluto, your natal Pluto, okay, um, 36 years old, as early as that, for some of you, those are the, the you know, initial shots in the battlefield of, of the midlife crisis, right? But if you think back to 36 years old, nine years prior to being 45, you were in a Jupiter return back then. And so, yeah, you were in a new growth cycle. What did you start during that time? That's something that maybe you'll need to be reevaluating by 45 because all through this midlife crisis energy, you've been working on, you've been going through a growth cycle and you're gonna start a new one by 48 years old. You'll start a whole new Jupiter return, okay? So ask yourself, at, you know, whether it is age 42 with the Jupiter opposing natal Jupiter or 45 with the closing Jupiter square, ask yourself, how's this cycle going? How is this growth cycle going? Can you recognize what the growth cycle is from age 36? 
yes, at 45, it's like there is a temptation to want to give up, you know, and I'm definitely like throw my hands in the air. I had to, and I was going through a lot of other energies, you know, which I'm not going to get into over here on this, you know, but just trust me when I say there were other energies in my chart that were just like, well, shit, <laughs> you know, hell if I know, <laughs> you know, so, um, you know, you might want to give up. It's kind of like you're at the home stretch. Like, do you do, are you losing heart at this point? And some people do. Some people start self-sabotaging. And and so the advice with that is, you know, if and I'm talking to I'm talking about this this uh, you know closing Jupiter square at 45. All right, don't give up. You've come too far by now. You've been through hell and back, right? And you're almost there to a new cycle, a new growth cycle. So um, I'm going to tell you on a personal note that, you know, at age 36, I, that was like 2011 for me. And I won't be 48 till 2023. So that's the, that's a 12-year cycle of me trying to become financially independent and free, which, uh, you know, because I went back to school. I was back in school and I graduated. I finished my degree in 2012. And then, you know, I got the job that turned out to pay me less than I was making before the degree. And then after a, over a year there and getting bonus and, a, you know, for meeting and exceeding requirements and got along with everybody, it would, they just decided they don't want me anymore. They started picking at my social media, you know, and they're like, bye. And then the house goes and everything goes, you know. So, you know the story. If you've watched all the videos in the series up to this point, you know the story of my midlife crisis and all the shit that hit the fan during that time. And all that lended itself towards me becoming more financially uh, fit, right? Like I had to learn during this time that financial fitness is more of what I needed to develop, okay? Basically the ability to what, uh, weather whatever storms, financial storms in life were thrown at me. It's not about there's no easy button that you're just, you're gonna go, you're gonna go get into student loan debt to get this degree and then you're gonna get a good job and you're gonna pay it off and everything's gonna work out great now. You know, or that one job is gonna fix all of this for you or that um, launching one business on one platform. No, that's too simple. Um, I had to learn about uh, being nimble, being agile, being financially literate, learning like how to move, flex, and flow with the whatever is thrown at me at a given time, right? Because a, a degree didn't fix it, a good job didn't fix it, an online business or a side hustle didn't auto magically fix it. But what I learned through this time is that being aligned with my God-given gifts and talents and finding a supportive network of people who are truly in alignment with my values and who are who can and will actually support me in a tangible way um, and then having that financial literacy and options to navigate these challenges that's what gets me through it's not the piece of paper it's not the job it's all of these other things right I wish it was that simple we want to believe right I came in came into this 12 year cycle of thinking that this is a matter of, of, of getting higher education to get higher pay. No, and a lot of people believe like that. But coming out of it on the other side, um, I've, I've gotten really schooled on how um, that's, that's not the answer. It's not that simple. Um, you have to really get in alignment within yourself, with other people, and smarten up, toughen up, and you know, I think that's what I've been saying all along from beginning, from the beginning to end of this series is that you, the purpose of the midlife crisis energy is for you to get more in a tune with who you truly are and refocusing your energy on that, not what people say, go back to school, get a J-O-B, just over broke. Meh. No, 
do what is in alignment with you. Be true to your authentic self so that you can come into uh, a more fulfilling life. I hope that what I've said here has helped you and please know that if you want somebody to look at your chart, um, I'm more than happy to do it. I do offer those services. Um, you can contact me for a private reading if you are interested at crownones.weebly.com. I will have the link below. But for those of you who just wanted the information, I hope that this has been enough to help you get wherever you are going. And I am wishing you guys all the best. Be blessed.